Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to go over three bit instructions in Alan Bradley's Connected Components Workbench software that realistically probably make up 80% of all PLC programs out there. Before we get started, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And we're going to be working in Connected Components Workbench. As I talked about a few videos ago, we're using version 12. Make sure you're using at least version 12 because we're going to be using this logics theme throughout all of the series. And we're going to go ahead and create a new program. And we're just going to call it Bits. Then we're going to navigate to our controller, which is a Micro 820. And it is a 2080. LC2020 20 QWB version 12. And we're going to select it and add to the project. Now, if we went through that really fast, don't worry. We have a whole series that we've already gone through. One, you how to download your Connected Components Workbench software, how to configure your Ethernet driver and RS links, how to upload and download programs, and how to create a program. And I'll put a link to that whole series in the description. And let's go ahead and give this just a name beyond Micro 820. We'll just call it Bits. And we're gonna configure our ethernet and it will be our default address for our trainer, which will be 192.168.110. And the default subnet of 255.255.255.0 will work great. And that's all the configuration we need to do in our controller. So we're ready to create a program. We're going to right click programs. We're going to add a new ladder diagram. And then we'll go ahead and click on Prog 1. And actually everything we need is on our favorites tab by default. But let's go ahead and click on our bit tab. That gives us a few more, even though we're not going to use them. I want you to start getting familiar with where all these tabs are that kind of group all these instructions together. We're going to click on this direct contact examine if closed. We're going to bring it down and that'll bring up our variable selector. And so you have global variables that are accessible from any program. You have your local variables that are only accessible from this program one. And the one that we're really gonna be focused on today will be the IO tab. So this is the physical IO of our Micro 820. And one thing that stumps me often is the digital outputs are above the digital inputs. And I don't know why, but I always seem to grab the outputs and put them where the input should be. So make sure you pay attention to where it says DI or DO here. The DI is the digital input. Those are all the buttons that you wired to the top. And then the DOs are the digital outputs, which are what you wired to the lights. Now, if you're like, I didn't wire mine, again, in that link I put in the description, it's gonna go through exactly how we wired our trainer so you can follow it along. And for this instruction, we're gonna select input four because input four is wired to button one. We'll click it. And then it's not really clear what that is. So let's go ahead and go to the back to the variable selector. And right out here beside of it, it has an alias. And let's just put button one. There, now it kind of has a little bit more description. Next, we're going to do this direct call slash output energize. So we'll pull it down. And you know, it's going to default over here to the local variables, but we want to click over here on our IO and we're going to use output zero. Only this time, let's go ahead and add an alias to this one while we're here and let's call this light one. So that's it for our first rung. Now we're going to add a second rung. On all of our tabs, you have these two instructions right here on the left side. The first one is how to add a rung. The second one is how to add a branch. We'll go through branches, I think the next video, or maybe it's two videos away. But first, we're just going to drag this rung down. And our first instruction we're going to use is this reverse contact examine if open. We're going to bring it down go to our IO tab and we're going to select input one. Oh, and I almost did it. You see, I'm just so naturally just thinking inputs then outputs and I, I end up doing that every so often. So be really careful of that. Uh, we want to be down here. We're going to select input five 
and we'll call that button two. Select it. And then we're gonna add another direct call output energize. We'll bring it down, go back to our IO tab, and we're gonna use output one, which will be light two. All right, so that is it for a basic program. You should have an a symbol that looks something like this with input four. Go into a symbol that looks something like this with output zero. And then on the next rung, this symbol almost looks the same, but see it has that slash through it. And that should be going to input five. And you should have this symbol that's exactly the same as the one above going to output two. And we're gonna go ahead and download this program. And I already have a video on how to download if you need help or a refresher on it. So let's just hit the download button and we're gonna navigate to our PLC. We're gonna download with project values. All right, download is complete. Do you wanna switch back to run mode? And yes, we do. And right away, you should have heard a click happen and we have an output on. But let's go ahead and spin this around where we can see our lights. But if you've downloaded correctly and you're still connected as it says here, then you're gonna see some blue lines and you're gonna see some red lines. And the blue lines represent false conditions and the red lines represent true conditions. And right here, we have blue on this top on our light one and we don't have a light on. And we have red down here and we do have a light on. And if we press button one, light one's gonna come on. If we press button two, light two is gonna go out. And that's the basics of this program, but there's a lot more here. And this may be the most important thing to grasp if you really want to have a deep understanding of how PLCs operate. So if we click on this button, you can see here it says direct contact. If we click on this output here, it says call. If we click on this one, it says reverse contact. And I'm gonna tell you the most fundamental thing that you need to comprehend if you really want to grasp PLCs, is to throw these three terms out the window. What this is, is an attempt to make you relate a PLC output to a contactor or a relay. This isn't a contactor or relay. This is a PLC. So let's go ahead and open up our global variables and see if we can walk through this program. So we're gonna open that up, and then if you just kind of click it here and drag it a little, you can undock it. Let's bring that down right below here. And I think that probably gets us, let's drag this out where we can see. And you see this checkbox right now by output one, which is also why light two is on. Now remember from my blank programs lesson, you need to think about a checked box as a one, and an unchecked box as a zero, mainly because as you're moving back and forth through the other Helen Bradley softwares, that's how they do it. And so to just make it a little smoother. So now let's look at these instructions. We have this instruction here and it says direct contact. What Tim says it says is go look for a one. Where? And this address right above here, which we're gonna shorthand to input four. So there's input four. It says, do I have a one? No, so I'm gonna be false. And that's shown by this blue that you're seeing here. Gonna go over here to our coil with false conditions. What does a false coil do? It goes and writes a zero. Where? To the address that's right above it, which we're gonna shorthand and say, I'll put zero. So that's writing a zero or unchecking this box right here. Now this is very important. A lot of people will go and say, well, a false call or a false output does nothing. No, it goes and writes a zero. And it's very important to realize that every single output instruction, with few exceptions, do something whether they're true or false. Almost none of them do nothing. Before you can get in the comments, yes. If you've seen my latch unlatch video, that's the big one that one of them does nothing. So now let's look at this instruction. And what does this one do? It is calling it a reverse contact. Well, reverse contact goes and looks for a zero. Where? And whatever's right above here, which we're gonna shorthand and say input five. Go to input five. Do we have a zero or is a box unchecked? Yes. 
So this instruction is true, because remember it was going to look for a zero and it found a zero. And that's what this red indicates is that this is a true condition. And it's passing true conditions on to this coil. And what does a true coil do? It goes and writes a one. Where? To the instruction that is right here above it, which is gonna be output one. And that's why you're seeing this checkbox here. So now let's press button one. We press button one, obviously we see the light come on, but all right, how does it come on? So we have a direct contact and direct contact is gonna say, go look for a one. Where? At input four. Do I have one? Yes. So this is gonna be true and it's represented by the red. So he's gonna pass true conditions to this coil this time and a true coil is gonna say, go write a one. Where to? Output zero. And that is why the light is on. So now let's press button two. We see that it kind of looks a little funny. We have a little bit of red here and we have a little bit of blue here. And this is something to kind of start to understand how it works in the CCW software is the red is the condition of the input. So what it means is if this is red, this box has a one in it. So if we look at input five, then we have a one in the box. And that's what that red represents. But this instruction, this reverse contact says, go look for a zero. Where? At input five. Do I have one? No, the box is checked. So it's a one. So this instruction is false. And that's why you see the blue here. So it's gonna pass false conditions over to our coal and a false coal is gonna go right a zero. Where? In output one. And that is why the light is out. So let's put all this together with our scan worksheet that we did in the previous video. So the first thing a PLC is gonna do is it's gonna scan its inputs and it's gonna update this global variable sheet right here. So it's gonna look at input zero and say, do I have current? No. So we have a zero or the box is unchecked for input zero. It's gonna to go to one, do the same thing, two, three. It's gonna go all the way through, read each physical input and update the global variable. Then it's going to execute its program. Now, a PLC program is going to start at rung one and it's gonna execute from left to right of rung one and then it's gonna rung two and it's gonna keep going down through all of them. So it doesn't do them all at the same time. It's gonna do rung one, rung two, rung three, rung four. It's gonna to come to this instruction and say, do I have a one? Where? At input four. Now it's gonna be very important to realize that this is looking at input four in your global variable. It is not looking at this physical input. So it looks here and it says I have a zero. It was looking for a one, so this is gonna be false and it's gonna pass a false condition over to this call and a false call is going to go right a zero where to to output zero now again it did not write to this physical output right now it's only writing to this global variable then it's going to come to the end of this wrong it's going to go to the beginning of the next wrong this reverse contact says go look for a zero where in input five do i have one no this was looking for a zero it found a zero so this is true going to pass true conditions on to this coil and a true coil is going to go write a one where to to output one now again it only wrote to this global variable and now we're at the end of our program and so once we get to the end of our program now it's going to come over and it's going to update its outputs and it's going to look at output zero and it's going to say i have a zero in the box turn off output zero I have one and i'll put one's box Turn on output one. Output two has a zero, so it's off. Output three has a zero, so it's off. It goes through that very methodical sequence with every one of them. And it's gonna come around, it's gonna do that little bit of overhead, and it's gonna do it all again. Now all that happens in like a millisecond, maybe two. I don't know how many it is. I don't know what the scan time on this one is. But it just keeps repeating that process over and over and over and over again. So remember, a direct contact goes and looks for a one at whatever address you have in that instruction. A reverse contact goes and looks for a zero at whatever address you have in that instruction. And a call that has true conditions will go and write a one to whatever address you have in that instruction. And a false call will go and write a zero to whatever address you have in that instruction. And remember, it only writes to the variables. It does not read the physical inputs. It does not write to the physical outputs. That is done 
during the input and output part of the scan cycle. If you will stick to go look for a one, go look for a zero, go write a one, go write a zero, then you will be hours ahead, like maybe years ahead. Please hit that like button and subscribe. We do put out at least one video a week on an automation topic. And if you're making money off our videos, but you're not actually using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.